What I'm worried is not that the motor will be strong enough. It's got plenty of torque, uh, but the return spring may not be able to bring it back. That's the only thing I'm concerned about here. All right, so let's uh, mount this motor. Motor goes on the right-hand side because of the direction it turns, but I put pockets on both sides in case uh, I found a motor with a different, uh, you know, a different orientation. They have left turning and right turning motors, so I picked the motor that I thought would be uh, a good uh, a good fit. Well, actually, I got the one that was in stock. Oh, that's interesting. We got to trim those screws down because <laughs> they won't allow they won't allow this guy here to sit flush. So we're going to trim we're going to tighten those up and trim them off. These two screws, I, I assume that, that you had to do that anyways, but uh, I don't know why they didn't make the shaft longer on this uh, rotary uh, actuator. Uh, they made it really short on both sides. Not quite sure. Doesn't make any sense because you can always cut some off. Can't easily add. So anyways, uh, I'm going to trim these off. Be right back. In addition to removing, reducing the screws, I still don't have much shaft to grab onto. So I am going to have to reduce this center section here, remove the set screws and reduce that diameter down, which means I'll have to hold this gently in the chuck, try and get this square. Eek. Okay, this is a very delicate part. Turning it down is not going to be super easy. Huh. Well, we'll remove these set screws first and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got this sitting against the spacer. I checked run out both on this plane and this plane, and it's only a couple thousandths, so I think we're doing well. i got to take this all the way down to 700 thousandths. I've got to take a half an inch off that thing. So uh, we're just going to get started after I get it in gear. So, I guess I should find my, my zero, I'll call it right here, I guess. Must be my Z knot and my X knot all at the same time. Okay. The only problem is the set screws are really long. So I'm probably gonna have to reduce those too somehow. Those are really fine threads. That might be a little more challenging. I'm lucky that that outer circumference is in, you know, on the same axis and equidistant from the center because this piece is just a pressed on plate. So I'm really kind of lucky. Okay, I think that might work. Let's just see if this guy will fit. It's right uh, within a couple thousandths. And since this was just an arbitrary size choice, I think we should be good, and I think there's enough meat for the set screws to fit all the way in, because the set screws could run into stuff. All right, let's head back. So the set screws it came with were so long that they would have rubbed. Fortunately, I bought a couple sets of metric set screws from, on Amazon and happened to have the right size. Those are freaking M3. I would have had the size. I could have had it here too. Yeah, I lucked out. Yeah, we can get far enough over now, I think. Oh yeah, that's awesome. That'll work. So I think I might have to leave these loose because I think with the length belt I chose, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm gonna have to put the belt on both pulleys and then slide it down simultaneously. Boy, that is a tight fit. Okay, second pulley. Ha! Huh. Oh, look at that supposed to be quarter inch. It is not. <laughs> huh. Okay. So it looks like I might have to go and return this shaft yet again. <laughs> I think rather than reduce the shaft anymore, I'm going to ream it instead. Because the shaft, I made 0.249. 
thousand thunder. And so I'm going to ream this uh, 250 or 251. I'll be right back. All right, ream this guy out to 251. It's a tiny bit sloppy. I think uh, I didn't, I used a manual drill. So that was not an ideal solution for this. Now I believe I have the exact right size. If I did all my calculations correct, this should just slide right on each one of these. There we go. Okay. Of course I didn't get the adjustment screws aiming in the right direction. So we got everything just right. I was going to put an idler wheel on this, um, but I, that was sort of like an afterthought. Uh, if nothing else worked, I was going to do that. Okay, there's one. Make sure that's lined up correctly. Looks like it is. I'm wondering if I'm going to have to put some flats in this shaft to have this guy grab well. <clears throat> oh, that's weird. It's eccentric. <laughs> this one is, this little gear is eccentric. So when I tighten it down, you see it? Pulls the belt too tight. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <sighs> I think maybe when I, uh, Use my hand drill. It did not center up because it's clearly at an angle on this side. It looks centered here, which is the side I was drilling from. And I thought it would just follow it right through, but that looks very much off center. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to order another gear. Damn it. All right. So we're moving right along with problem after problem. So here's the first uh, problem that I'm saddled with, which is the sleeve bearings. The nylon sleeve bearings I used have a little bit too much friction. So you'll notice that the return spring can't return it because even though there's not a lot of friction right here, it's magnified about four to one because that's the gear ratio. So the, the amount of friction force that the motor feels is about four times what it is here. So even though it's not a lot, it's still too much. So I'm thinking either I need to go to bronze sleeve bushings or ball bearings. And I've got a variety of ball bearings. These are standard ball bearings. And here's some angular contact ones. That may be a solution. The angular contact are metric, so I would have to change some proportion material. The second problem is that <clears throat> when the material, when the stuff loads, when the uh, needles load here, uh, they're so lightweight that there's not a lot of force pushing down. And maybe if this thing was full, it would work fine. But when it starts to get towards the bottom, I only have seven or eight sample needles, and there's not enough weight pushing down to get them to unwedge themselves even though they're very smooth so i'm thinking about putting an offset motor here's a three volt motor put a weight on it that's offset and attach it down here to make this whole thing vibrate and hopefully that will cause them to sort themselves out also this thing overturns just a little bit which may not be a problem it may unload just fine but i also have a different a slightly larger gear here which will reduce the ratio so that this won't travel quite as far. I'm not sure what my solution is yet, uh, but first we got to pull this off. I'm going to try the bronze sleeve bearings because they should fit. The only thing is the thickness of the lip here is an eighth of an inch. I don't know if you can see that, but it's an eighth of an inch. That's too thick. So I will have to compensate for that. I'll have to reduce those down just a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll start with those, see how slippery those are. These are self lubricating ones. Uh, or switch to the ball bearings, maybe angular contact. Don't know <clears throat> whether it's angular contact or regular ball bearings. Uh, that might, that'll be my solution. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> let's try some solutions, see if I can solve these problems. All right, so we got this guy apart and I was comparing the friction here of the nylon bushing to the bronze bushing. And the bronze is uh, definitely, let's call it more sl slippery, slipperier. Yeah, whatever the proper word is for that. Uh, definitely less friction, especially if there's a little bit of uh, pressure put on it. This one 
is just slightly more, and I'm hoping that these guys will make it work. But rather than jump straight to the bearings, I'm willing to do the work twice. But for bearings, I gotta cut this hole out much bigger and deeper to fit the bearing in there. Uh, this is almost the right size for the bronze bushing, except the outside diameter of these, instead of fitting in a 5 8 hole, it's like 3 thousandths over. Uh, so I'm gonna take uh, my air sander here, and you just got the shaft that I slit down the center. And you just put some sandpaper on it like that in the direction of rotation, and uh, you can remove some material, which is what we're gonna do. Yeah, so this is a really handy tool to have. You just wanna remove a little bit of material. It tends to move material fairly evenly. It does a pretty decent job. It leaves a nice finish too. So we're gonna keep that up until we can get enough material out that this will be a press fit in. It doesn't even have to be a tight press fit. I couldn't even get it started before, and now I can get it started. Yeah, it's already getting close. See, look at that. All right, one more pass and we should be there and then I'll press it in. All right, so I got these both uh, made slightly larger. And you notice this sticks out about a sixteenth of an inch more than the other ones. So I'm going to take this over to the milling machine. We're just going to come across here and mill it down. And I can tighten this up because I'm going to measure the shaft uh, distance across here, which now is smaller than 6.9 because I took a little bit of material off. And we're going to try and make these things match uh, thickness so this is a little bit tighter again, so there's not so much slop. We'll see if this is enough uh, friction reduction that I don't have to go to the bearing. But, you know, we might have to go to part two, which would be the ball bearings on each side. So this is a simple operation, just removing the uh, material here. So the way I find my, uh, set my zero is, I use the quill and bring the quill down till the cutter is touching, which might be negative a thousandth or two, um, but that gets me relatively close. And I hit Z naught on my DRO, and then I lower the table using the knee. So that way, now I can bring it down slowly in increments. So the amount of material I need to remove is about 67 thousandths. <clears throat> Total, well, 60 thousandths, I'm gonna leave about 7 thousandths proud. So what I'm gonna do is, let's start by dialing in a known amount. <clears throat> so let's do 40 thousandths. We'll take off a good chunk of material here. And we'll just take it off slowly. There we go. And I'll measure, see how proud it is. And I should have to take off about 20 thousandths. Using a depth, depth mic like this is a little tricky, uh, especially when you're only holding one side because there's a fair amount of leverage you've got trying to lift this guy up. So it can make a challenge to get it, challenging to get an accurate measurement. Yeah, see it's, ja it's jacking up that side essentially. I'm holding fairly tight here, and it looks like we're 23 thousandths proud, and I want to leave about seven, so that means I need to go down 16 and I'll be done. And to be safe, I'm locking the knee. Okay, so I'm about seven and a half thousandths, which will leave 15 thousandths, and my shaft is about 18 thousandths too short. That'll leave three thousandths slop. Hopefully that'll be enough. Um, if there's any twist in these plates, you know, if they're warped at all, or the screws don't have them perfectly aligned, then there'll be some extra friction because of that. So I'll check that out. I've also got to deburr this. You gotta love this. So I got these down to size, pressed them in, and guess what? Squeezing those took them from a really loose fit, well, not a loose fit, but a nice accurate fit to a too tight a fit, especially up here towards the front. Same with this guy. Both of them did the same thing. So they're sort of tight up, uh, up towards the top or towards the back actually, where the material's thinnest. I guess that makes sense. This wasn't a heavily heavy interference fit, maybe a thousandth or two, but uh, was enough, so now we're gonna use the uh, same technique that I used to enlarge the holes to begin with. All right, so we got this back together. Definite improvement, but there's still perhaps too much friction with the reduction. 
It's actually more slop than I thought there would be. Could put a wave washer in there, but uh, that's not what I'm concerned about. It, it really is the friction. And by the time you multiply it up by four, it might still be too much. I think bearings are gonna be the solution, unfortunately. So take it apart again, because we're getting good at it.